There we go. We have some amazing speakers today, so I'm going to do a quick keynote just to get you all woken up, and then I look forward to see all the amazing talks in the rest of the day. Um, I'm going to break this talk into two parts. First, we'll take a look at what has happened over the last year since the last pre uh, Prisma Day. And then I'll talk a bit about some trends we're seeing in the industry and how Prisma fits into that. So first, a year in review. It's been a year since the last Prisma Day, and that was an online event. It's really great to be here in person now. I mean, it's been two weird years, COVID and all this stuff going on. And getting back to being able to meet each other in person, interact and talk, is just really amazing. Um, so four years a day, we really started to see a, a change in the Node ecosystem. And that was, that was the seed of what became Prisma. If you remember back, there was this war going on between TypeScript and Flow, trying to bring some sanity into the Node ecosystem. Um, and at the time, it was pretty exciting. We didn't really know where it would go, but pretty soon it became clear that TypeScript would just dominate. Not only would it be the type language of choice, it would be the, like, the dominant language period in the Node ecosystem. So we saw that four years ago, and we started working towards this vision of building a, an ORM, a query builder, that is really the most sophisticated library using TypeScript. And it is uh, as a result of that vision that we today are the, really becoming the new default ORM in the Node ecosystem. We have almost 200,000 developers using Prisma. Uh, and, and that number keeps growing. It has been growing 10%. Uh, between 10 and 15% every month for the last two years, and it's continuing to grow. So that's really, really cool to see. This is an ecosystem that is vibrant and growing. Every day we have uh, 500,000 downloads on NPM, and we have thousands of companies deploying Prisma in production-ready applications. Um, our team has spent the last year talking to many of them, and as a result of that, you can, you can go online and find some of these uh, showcases that really demonstrate what people are doing with Prisma. Uh, here are a few of them. Invisible is a large company that migrated the entire stack from SQLize to, uh, to Prisma, and as a result, they were able to speed up their development process. Uh, Cal.com is a really interesting open source company. They're venture backed, but all of their software is open source. They have more than 20,000 users. So if you want to go and look at the source code of a, of a, like a real high-growth startup, go have a look at their GitHub. And then finally, Poppy is a Belgian mobility startup that you can rent cars and mopeds, these kind of things. And they're running Prisma for the entire thing. They bet on Prisma from day one, and today they have more than 400 SQL queries per second in just normal load. And we are really, really excited, flattered that some of these next generation developer tools are, are built on Prisma. They're using Prisma as, as the foundation. So Application is a low-code development platform for front-end and back-end developers. They recently raised six million in funding, and they have been embedding Prisma from day one. Another one is, uh, is Redwood. It's a full-stack uh, web framework for startups kind of recreating some of that vibe from, uh, from Ruby on Rails in the early days, but in the Node ecosystem. And for their ORM layer, they're using Prisma. Uh, here today, of course, is uh, our very own David, who is emceeing the conference. He's part of the awesome Redwood team. Um, and they are funded by Tom Preston Warner, one of the co-founders of GitHub. Uh, so that's a cool thing to be a part of. And finally, Keystone, uh, with version 6, we're really excited to see that they switched to Prisma as the default uh, ORM layer. It's a pretty big uh, CMS, uh, more than a thousand installs and lots of open source contributors. Now, one of the things that I enjoy most is to, to see developers experience Prisma for the first time, see that aha moment when they do the auto completion. It's like, ha, huh, it just does stuff for me. That's pretty cool. So we've collected some of those moments in a video. We had some issues with the audio before, so I hope it works. It's 40 seconds, I'm going to just play it. If the audio doesn't work, you can play a game of spot the famous developer in there. That'll be fun. I'll play the video, and then I'll get back to you in 40 seconds. OK, that is a pretty neat bit. And hit refresh, run that again. 
Do we get another one? We do. Oh, how cool is that? Nice. Thank you for giving examples, Prisma. You're the best. Ooh. Ah, oh, look at that. This is so nice. I'm not gonna lie, this is really cool. Like, I, I did not know that this was uh, that this was a feature, and this is a really, really handy feature. That this is, you know, a thing that we can just very quickly stand up. I, I like that yeah. a lot. Um, but yeah, yeah, this is awesome. This is really cool. Exactly, this loads up in the browser. Like submit these links. They're gonna go in the database. This is how easy Prisma makes working with databases. It's really fun. Okay, that is a pretty neat bit. Once is enough. <laughs> so now let's talk about some of the uh, cool and exciting features we've added to Prisma over the last year. Um, I think that really the biggest chunk of work has gone into to full support for MongoDB. It was a huge effort for the, for the query engine team. Um, but now we support Mongo as a first class uh, database. We have awesome support for relational databases, but our support for Mongo is just as sophisticated. So that's been super cool to see. And we have a, about a 2,000 developers that picked it up in the first month, and we expect to see that grow to become about a third of all Prisma developers over time. We also added support for Microsoft SQL Server, a little more enterprise -y, but also Cockroach and Planet Scale. And they are awesome offerings for serverless relational databases. Um, another big area of effort over this year was to improve the flexibility of Prisma Migrate. So Prisma Migrate is really, really cool because it's a declarative migration system. That means you just write your schema, you make changes, and then you let the system figure out the delta to apply to your database. It's really cool when it works, but when it doesn't quite work, it can be frustrating. So the team uh, sitting over here have been spending some time figuring out how can we help you get out of these issues. So with the two new commands, Prisma Migrate Diff and Prisma DB Execute, you now have more flexibility to recover from failed migrations and to, to run arbitrary SQL as part of your migration steps when you need to. And finally, we've been working on this thing we call the Prisma Data Platform. Um, the ORM is really the foundation of everything we are doing. The open source ORM uh, has a lot of users, there's a lot of work we still need to do. But our long-term vision is to, to solve data access for applications on a much larger scale, and that's what the data platform is all about. Over the last couple of years, we have spoken to hundreds, like almost thousands of developers using the Prisma ORM, not using the Prisma ORM, figuring out what are the issues around data access in applications. We've also spoken to large tech companies like Twitter and Facebook to learn from the tooling they have built internally to, build, to make their developers more productive. And the result of all of those conversations is our vision for the application data platform. Um, the first part of this that some of you have been using already in preview is uh, the Prisma data proxy. And we have heard from, from many users during this preview phase that it's, uh, it's really helpful. It helps you manage connections in serverless environments. And as a bonus, it also enables you to connect to your traditional relational or Mongo database from edge environments like Cloudflare Workers or, or Vercel. And also, this year, we announced our, our seed round. Uh, not a seed round, our B round. We raised $40 million from Altimeter. Uh, and some of you might be aware of of the weird funding environment we are in right now, where, where some companies have really struggled to raise, some large, later stage startups have fired a lot of people, it's really kind of uncertain times. But as a result of our large community using Prisma and our, our clear vision for the future of the application data platform, we were able to raise a good, a good B round. And now we, we look forward to, to use this money to continue to accelerate our investment in the open source ORM. There's lots of work for us to do but also to really speed up the development of the application data platform. Another fun thing that happened is that Nasdaq decided that we were one of the 10 most promising early stage enterprise tech startups. Um, so they put us on Times Square, which was kind of fun. 
Um, and our team is, uh, is really a bunch of great people. This, this year we crossed 70 people and we went to, a, to an off-site in Spain. Um, as you know, it has been a couple of, of weird years during COVID. And most people joining the team have joined remote. We are a fully distributed company and, and most people never met before. So just a few weeks ago, we were able to all come together in Barcelona, meet each other for the first time, and that was just uh, it's a really nice experience. Um, if there's one thing that sets Prisma apart as a company, it is our focus on hire really great people that we are excited to get to work with every day. Um, so I feel privileged to be able to work with so many kind, smart, passionate people every day. And yeah, we are hiring. Um, I just looked at the website this morning. We have 11 open positions across the entire company, uh, engineering, product, design, DevRel. So if you're looking for something new, if you're here today, come talk to some of us. We all like to tell you about Prisma and what we're doing every day. If you are watching online, go to the website, have a look at our, at our, at our offerings and, and come talk to us. So now let's switch gears a little bit and talk about some trends in application development and how Prisma fits into that. I'm going to talk through four trends that we are hearing from, from our users, that we are seeing in the industry. So the first is that front-end developers are becoming full-stack developers. We'll talk about serverless, developer experience, and then the increasing complexity in the data layer. There is this really amazing proliferation of, of, uh, of full-stack frameworks like, uh, like Next and Remix that they're really just great tools to use. And they enable front-end developers to, to start doing a little bit of back-end code. Um, some of these frameworks will enable you to, to write a small JavaScript function together with all your normal code. And then the system will just take that create an API route and deploy it to a serverless function for you, which is um, super, super cool and useful. Um, this enables you to, to do more work, do more complex things without having to, to think about all of the infrastructure, setting up a separate service, go through all of that work that would normally uh, kind of hold you back. Um, but one thing we have been hearing from many of those people is that it's easy to, to start putting some, some business logic on the server. Maybe you can start calling some existing API functions. But at some point, you really want to, to start storing state in that full, tech, full stack context. You want a database. Um, and that can get kind of complicated. Relational databases are very different to work with than our normal objects in JavaScript. Um, that's just a mismatch. So as all of you know, Prisma bridges that gap. Prisma helps you think about databases in a way that is much more familiar to, to front-end developers. Yeah. Uh, apologies for this bad joke. <laughs> Build more serverless. Serverless is a, a huge trend uh, in the industry. Um, serverless enables you to to really deploy complex, uh, complex infrastructure without much uh, effort. It enables you to scale up and scale down uh, easily. So it's an amazing enabler. Um, but there is a challenge. And the challenge is that with databases, you really need stateful connections. Traditional databases, they they require you to set up a stateful connection to read and write data. And that is, a, that is a mismatch for how serverless functions work. Serverless functions are stateless. They spin up and down as, a, as your requests come in. And that can be, that can be difficult to all fit together. Um, to, so to illustrate this problem, Here's a graph that shows requests coming into your, to your web service on the x-axis, and then the connections you open up on the y-axis. 
as requests come into your web service, normally you would have you would be able to reuse connections between requests, but in a serverless environment, as you know, Lambda functions, they can just spin up, spin down, and often your requests will end up on different infrastructure. So that means you can't reuse those connections. So as a result, you will quickly exhaust the connection limit in your databases. The solution to this is to introduce another stateful component, a a data proxy, so you can use something like PG Bouncer, but then you have to manage that on your own, it's kind of annoying. Instead of going through all of that hassle, you can use the Prisma Data Proxy, which is a managed serverless function as part of the Prisma Data Platform, that will do this work for you. It's tightly integrated into the Prisma ORM, and you can enable it just by switching a, a single configuration in your Prisma schema. The third trend that I would like to talk about is uh, developer experience. I think we all talk about developer experience as it's just something natural. We all want a better, better tooling, a better experience. Um, but if you take a step back and think about what enables better developer experience, what is happening over time, I, I think it's useful to think about our industry as as having kind of generations uh, of developers that, that last about five to 10 years, and every generation of new developers is, is really 10 times bigger. Our industry is an industry that is, that is just growing rapidly. It's super, super fast. So what happens every time you have a new generation of developers? You have a much bigger market, so we collectively can invest much more money into tooling for developers. Um, at Fresma, we think of developer experience as having really two core tenants. It's productivity and confidence. So if you look at productivity, you can, you can look at the company perspective and say, developer experience is important because we can move faster, we can be more competitive in the market. Um, when you look from, from the developer's perspective, it's more about like, having great tools, having fun doing the work we are doing. But luckily, those two things go together. So when we create tools that make you feel more confident, you can, you can use auto-completion in the IDE. You will, get, you will get error messages from TypeScript if you miss something. That confidence enables you to be much more productive. And as a result, the company you work in is more competitive. So that's why developer experience is, is something we all want, but it's also something companies are realizing that they need to invest in. They need to invest in developer experience to attract developers, of course, but just as importantly, to be able to compete with the other companies. And finally, the last trend I, I want to talk about is this increasing complexity in the data access layer. Um, it used to be that we could all just use a single general purpose database and that would solve all of our needs. That was 20 years ago at a time when we had much less scale, much lower requirements. People expected less from those uh, systems. And what is happening now is that people are starting to introduce all kinds of extra functionality into the applications. You might need to do a full text search, you introduce a search index like Elastic or Algolia. You might need to, to serve really fast requests or scale, so you introduce a caching solution like Redis. Maybe you need to do some graph computation, uh, nearest neighbors or, or social, social graphing. So you introduce a graph database like Neo for the uh, dgraph. And the challenge with this is that using a single database is pretty easy. All of the, all of the internals required to make the database work and perform, they are just that, they are internals in the database. It's a really nicely wrapped product that you can just use. But now, when you're using many different databases, all of those internals very much become your job. You now have to understand how all of it fits together. You need to sync data from one place to another. You need to make sure it, it doesn't drift. All of the hard work that database engineers have been working on for decades is now your job. Um, so we think the solution to this is to try to bring some of this complexity back into the product under the surface. That's our vision for the application data platform, to build a system that helps you use all the databases you need to use, 
but without having to really be experts in the internals of databases. So in the industry, there's this um, emerging pattern called change data capture that really is used to, to synchronize different data stores and do it in a very production-ready fashion. Over time, you'll see us build direct support for, for this pattern and, and more into the application data platform so that you can use these things directly from the, from the Prisma ORM without having to, to worry about all of the internals. And speaking about the Prisma data platform, uh, we've been working on this for, for almost two years. Many of you have been helping us provide feedback for the data platform over the last months, and we've been very, very thankful for that. And today, I'm really happy to announce that the Prisma data platform is ready for production. We are launching the data platform in GA. Thank you. Some of you have been using this in production already, and you're brave souls. Today, you can, you can sleep a little bit at night and continue to use it. The data platform has the data proxy that I talked about. It has a data browser that you can use as a developer, but you can also invite other people from the company to access parts of your data in a secure way. We have the query console you can use to, to go and write Prisma queries against your production data and see what comes back, and a bunch of other things. And, and this is really just the early beginning. This is, this is the, the first step towards that vision that we are talking about. Um, it will take us many years to get there, and over the next few years, you will see us add more and more functionality. So to wrap it up, those were the four trends we talked about. Front-end developers becoming full stack and how Prisma helps bridge that gap towards working with databases. Um, the fact that serverless is just a, an absolutely dominating trend in our industry um, and you need ways to, to deal with the statefulness of, of traditional databases and then the ephemeral nature of serverless functions. We talked about developer experience and how Prisma thinks about developer experience as as a thing that can empower all of you, but also help your companies be more competitive. And we talked about how the data layer is becoming much more complex and how we aim to help with that in the future. And before we end, before we end I, uh, I want to invite all of you to, to thank Natalia and the entire team who have put together this conference. Thanks, Natalia. She's sitting somewhere. It's over there. <laughs> We're going to have a great day. Finally, thank you to all of you for coming out here, flying some from far away. Take the day, talk to each other, come talk to me, people from Prisma. Have a lot of fun. Um, drink the coffee. Talk to David. He's a fun guy, too. Uh, welcome, and uh, enjoy the day.